Hello and welcome back to Producing Music. My name is Non Weary and in this video, buckle your seatbelts because I'm going to be showing you step by step how to make a future garage track in the style of Burial. I'll be covering how to make intricate percussion, syncopated rhythms, deep bass lines, and ethereal atmospheres. But enough messing around, let's get right into it. After setting the track to 120 to 140 BPM, start by setting the atmosphere. To do this, search for atmospheric samples or create your own. I use this great pack from Splice, but I'll show you how you can make your own samples as well. Start by picking the key of your track and creating a multi-voiced minor chord. Here I've chosen C minor and put in these five notes. Add a 100% reverb plug into your track and then load up your favorite synth. In this case, I'm using Serum and I'll start by adding a bunch of attack and release so the sound eases in and out. From here, I'll raise the unison on oscillator A to make it wide. Now go to your first LFO and create a wonky shape like this and set it to 8 bars long. We're going to map this to a bunch of parameters to make the sound morph and change over time. And then I'm going to scroll through and find a unique wavetable. Now that we have this basic sound, there are a few things that you can do to make it sound more special. Drag in a grain delay and copy these settings to give it some sparkly high end. Then add a bunch of EQs to fit where you want it in the mix. And after you layer it with some wind samples, rain, or any other natural atmosphere sound, it should end up sounding like this. Additionally, try to find a few different atmospheres in the same key and layer them throughout the track. Here, I've added two extra samples and processed them differently. Make the first one stutter by using an auto pan on 16th notes, and for the second, you can pitch to make the perfect fifth in the scale. In this case, I pitched the C atmosphere up seven semitones to G to add variation as the song progresses. Okay, now that you have your atmospheres in place, I'm going to show you how you can make a deep bass line that sits right underneath. Start by turning on oscillators A and B, setting the unison to 2, and lowering the detune to 10 o'clock. To give it that future garage feel, apply manual detune by lowering the fine tune of oscillator A by about 30 and raising the fine tune of oscillator B by about 30. I got this trick from Moonboy, and it makes the detune sound a little bit more special and a little bit better. Make sure to set the output to mono and add about 200 milliseconds of glide. From here, add dimension, tuning the mix and size to about 9 o'clock. Add zero squared distortion, a flanger, and a multiband compressor. We don't want these last two effects to be in full force, so we can use that same 8 bar LFO trick from the atmosphere section and make it sound like the bass is breathing over time. Apply the LFO to the mix knobs of both effects like this. In post-processing, cut all the high end and use another EQ to lower where the fundamental frequency of your kick drum is. As for theory, you're going to want to pick the root note of your scale and extend it throughout the track. Here I've added a little pitch bends, which is why we added the portamento in the sound design stage. Keep this part simple uh, and don't go too crazy with it. As always, I recommend spending some time gathering all your samples before you start crafting the drums. Here are some packs I recommend for making some burial style future garage. These will also be in the description as well if you want to find them after the video. Okay, so let's start our first pattern by adding a 16th note groove and then adding an industrial sounding snare on the second and fourth beats. Now, there are a couple classic patterns you can use as the foundation of your groove. Two of the ones that I've noticed are the two-step rhythm or the sped-up rhythm. Two-step is where the kicks fall in these spots, whereas the sped-up rhythm just shifts these two kicks over here. Both are great and I encourage you to mess around with both to create new grooves, uh, but for this video I'm going to use the sped up rhythm uh, and I added triplets at the end of the phrase like this. After this, add in short hi-hats on the offbeats, then throw on some swing hats using an even more closed hi-hat than the main one. I encourage you to experiment with this quite a bit to find the optimal spots for your closed hats. Now that the main drum elements are in place, duplicate your MIDI clip. In this clip, we're going to add extra kicks, percussion, and time-stretched elements that really give the drums their identity. Start by adding extra kick drums to create more of a complex rhythm. Then, use the perk sounds you gathered earlier and sprinkle them in to create even more syncopation. One helpful tip is to use polyrhythms to make more interesting grooves. In this example, I'm doing it with this perk sound and the hi-hat. The perk is playing triplets while the hi-hat is on quarters. Also, another helpful drum hack is to put on an extra snare right before the bar ends in this position. In almost every case, it will sound good. Here's what the drums sound like. Now you might be thinking, these don't sound like future garage drums. Well, that's where we get to the processing part. 
The easiest way to get that dark industrial feel is to add reverb with these settings here and add it to the whole drum rack. Start off by splitting the rack into two bands around 100 Hz. Then add your reverb on the high band since we don't want that to be applied to any of the sub frequencies. Once you've done this, roll off the top end and compress them all together and you've got yourself Future Garage drums. To make eerie and emotional vocal chops, find a sample that's about three to five semitones above the key of your track. If I could stay the night, make you feel alright. I know you're nervous, but I'm in service. Go through and identify interesting parts of the vocal, and then try to find parts that have pitch bends because oftentimes those offer more emotion than a sustained note. To give them that ethereal vibe, throw on an echo, reverb, and a low high cut. In the end, you should have something like this. One of the main points of Future Garage is to allow the listener to get lost in the groove and the ambient nature of your track. Because of this, don't do anything fancy with the arrangement. Use your atmosphere samples and part A and part B drum patterns to add subtle variation. But other than that, you want to keep the main elements consistent throughout the entire song. Here's a quick look at my mastering chain. This is a tip I learned from Virtual Riot. You can do a quick master that sounds pretty good by using these three multiband compressors, all at about 10%. Make sure your bass is in mono, add a limiter, and you're all set. I really appreciate it if you made it this far in the video. If you enjoyed the content or just learned something new, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Every interaction means the world to small channels. Thank you. And without further ado, here's the final result. <laughs>